Hello and welcome to the first ever Dad Chats. Um, today I've got Jem as the guest. Um, some of you might know Jem as Stone Cold Babe on Insta, Twitter and all the social medias. Uh, Jem has type 1 diabetes but that's kind of all I know. So I'm hoping she's going to tell me a little bit more. Um, hello Jem, how are you? Hello, I'm good. You? Yeah, fine. So let's let's start with uh, diagnosis, shall we? So, how did it all begin for you? Um, well, mine was around I think it was October 2011. Um, I just started not feeling well at the time. My granddad, who's passed now, he uh, was type two, and he said to me do you want to test your sugar levels on my machine because you shouldn't be going to the toilet a lot your weight shouldn't be changing so much um so between my granddad and my mum they were like okay yeah like you know you need to go to the doctors um and then I just went to the doctors they did a urine test and then went to work like you do and then I got a phone call like panic from the doctors saying you need to get to the hospital now like you're in DKA and I'm like what's DKA I didn't know um I was a carer at the time so I couldn't leave the client I was with so I just had this phone call and I still finished the client I was with um and then I rang up my boss and said look I'm gonna have to go to hospital and then they were like, well, what are you going to do about your clients? So I was like, well, I've got to go. So I went and then, yeah, basically they got me in and then they said, how come you're not like in a DKA coma? Your, your levels are through the roof, like your ketones are like way high. And I was like, I don't know. Like, I just generally didn't know. So, and then, yeah, I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. That's when they diagnosed you. So how, how were you feeling? at that stage we you, you think you were just accustomed to having ketones and high blood glucose and you didn't feel anything other than normal or were you feeling yeah, well? i think it was more i was i was always tired anyway because the job i had it was very early shifts so it was early in the morning so i was always tired anyway um and because i was quite young like as a woman your weight changes all the time anyway so i just kind of was like oh well of it too much this, these few months or I've not eaten enough um, and then it was just slowly when my energy got worse and worse that I was like okay something's not right um, and then when I was in the hospital um, they were trying to investigate so like well does it run in the families and I'm like no um, and then they actually think that um, my pancreas stopped working from a side effect from me taking Tammy flu because uh, I had swine flu um, and they gave me the wrong dosage of Tamiflu and it was too strong. So in turn, the Tamiflu made my body attack itself and in turn, slowly but surely, my pancreas stopped working. So that was quite a shocking revelation to get at the hospital. <laughs> wow. I've, I've never mm. heard that that could be a cause before. Yeah. I know some people have mentioned illnesses and things like measles and chicken pox, but never, never mm. a medication. Wow. Yeah. yeah it's because at the time they didn't know the dosages because it was such a new drug out and i was so sick they were like yeah yeah take it you know these are the known side effects didn't think anything of it and then yeah when i it was a few years later um then when i was diagnosed they said oh yeah if it has been known that you know it can attack the immune system um and yeah because i'd taken too high of a dosage they said that my body was coping for so long and then it just, the pancreas just gave up. So they said apparently it was like a shock to the system, but my system like lived with it for so many years and then eventually it just was like, no, I'm not having it now. So, and that's how come I became type one. It's crazy. <laughs> wow, it's fascinating. I've never heard of that before, but that's, that's fascinating mm. stuff. So that was, yeah. that was 10 years ago. That was a decade ago. Mm -hmm. So how do you feel things have changed in that time in terms of your uh, management of the condition do you feel you're, you're, you're managing better now than the early days or like, yeah the way you used to be yeah I'm a lot better now I must admit when I was younger like when I was younger diabetic let's call it when I was first diagnosed I was very and I'm sure other diabetics are the same I was very free and easy so I was very like 
oh, I'm only young. That'll be fine. I can do this with my insulin. I can skip this, skip that. And then as you get older, as in the diabetic years of having it, you realise that, no, that isn't the best idea or that isn't the right idea. And mainly confidence, having the confidence to, you know, be able to manage my diabetes. Whereas when I was newly diagnosed, I didn't change my insulin ratio because I was just too scared. Whereas now with support like from GB Doc and Twitter and my team, like you can now tweak things. Whereas when I was earlier on, I was like, oh, well, I'll just miss that dosage because I don't want to do it when really, you know, you should take it no matter what. But yeah, so that's what I think the difference for sure. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it sounds familiar to me. It's similar to the way things work with me as well. I discovered social media and Twitter and it's funny that you should mention GB Doc and that community do you feel that's been uh, a big a big support to you a big help to you yeah yeah i think so now? because it's with all the technology that everyone uses like a few times i've had discussions and i've helped people like with the libra issues or like if people can't get stuck or just sometimes it's nice to talk to other people like who have diabetes like, i'm not nothing against people who don't have diabetes but diabetics seem to Yes, we're all different, but we have that same common ground in a way. And it's nice to be able to talk to other diabetics, especially in the GB Doc community where, you know, like we do, we laugh about biscuits or we've got the ongoing joke about dinosaurs. You know, that's a break from the day. If you're having a bad day with your diabetes, all it takes is that little little distraction to take your mind off of it where you're not constantly thinking about diabetes and and then obviously it's perfect support, but yeah, it's nice to have that mixture sort of thing and be able to just shoot the breeze and feel like, okay, yeah, they get me now, you know? Yeah, it's just, it's nice to be mates, isn't it? And just have a chat mm. about whatever you're chatting about. I don't know how that dinosaur thing came about, but it did. No, um, <laughs> just started. <laughs> how, 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 are, how are you with um, technology at the moment? What are you what are you using anything at all uh i just use the libra 2 um and i use it with my iphone um and that's all i have at the moment um i have my apple watch where i connect it using a like a third party app um so then i get the readings on my watch um but i haven't really got anything else technology wise um still in the don't know area with pumps sort of thing and at the moment i'm just trying to get my um like daily injections sort of thing in more of a line um so i want to be more in control first and then maybe ask for a pump because i i know every area is different but there's a lot of hoops i've got to jump through and a lot of boxes to tick so i'd rather get that done now so then i can go up to them and be like look this is what i've done in preparation like can you help me sort of thing yeah. um but i i love having the libra i must admit that was a game changer for me like save my fingers as i say <laughs> yeah it does it absolutely does it just it it seems like such a, a long time ago when it first came out the first version um, mm. and when I used that, I thought, wow, this is, this is the stepping stone. This seems like the first step on the ladder for technology. Yeah. Now you're using version two and there's another version coming along and CGMs. And it's, yeah, it just seems that's the future. And we're kind of just edging into that now. So maybe mm. you see all the, all the looping data when that comes out. I don't know yeah, when. that does look you impressive. Know. Yeah. Mm. So far, so good. It seems to be, uh, seems to be getting mm. good feedback at the moment. So tech, you, you, you feel like tech is going to be part of your future. Are you happy with what you've got now or do you feel like there's something else? You feel you mentioned pumping. You feel pumping is going to be something you want to do as well or is it something you just thought you with? I don't know. There's pros and cons with um, pumps. Obviously, I've spoken to yourself and like, other uh, people in the dark community about pumps. Uh, for me, like. I've not actually like worn one, so I wouldn't know if I'd get on with it. Um, I know doing daily injections, I mean, I have a needle, needle phobia anyway, so that doesn't help. But um, like when they're painful, sometimes I think, oh, I've had a pump, it would be easier. Um, 
but it would be nice to have a complete system that did everything for me. I would like the idea of not having to scan all the time because um, like my Libra funding is based on how many scans per day. And sometimes if you're busy, you might forget to scan. And then like with the app I use for it to go on my watch, I have to scan it separately. So tech wise for me, I'd like to have like a complete system that they could give to you that, you know, you could just maybe set up, you know, and it all goes sort of thing. So I think like with the looping, I think that's great to see that that's coming out because it gives us hope that eventually we will be able to, because I'm very techy anyway. So I don't mind having separate bits to make it a complete process. But at the moment, I'm just sticking to the Libra 2. Obviously the Libra 3, if it comes out, like we get it. But yeah, it would be nice to become part robot, as I call it, and let something else do the work for us. You know, like the thinking process. I hate that part. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's just just losing some of that burden. It just takes up mm. gives you so much more headspace. That's what I found with initially with tech with the CGMs, and then with pumping afterwards. It it both both things are life changing. Um, so tech it appears is going to be a big part of your future. You mentioned there a needle phobia. Um, mm. Is that do you have a coping mechanism because you're still injected? Yeah. So do you have a coping mechanism to deal with that phobia? Is there something you might do or do you just suck it up, buttercup and get on with it? Mainly I think so. suck it up, but I can get on with it. Um, a lot of the time I try not to think about it. Um, it's hard when you're injecting um, outside um, or in public places. Um, when I first was diagnosed, I was very nervous because people do look and stare. Uh, now I have more confidence where I will say, you know, oh, I'm type 1 diabetic sort of thing, or oh, I'm doing my insulin sort of thing. So if I feel anxious, then I kind of just like in my head will do like a count in my head or think about something I'm doing later on in the day to kind of distract it. And then other times I'm like, Jim, just do it, get it done, then you can get on with your day. So yeah, it, I have to kind of do mind over matter. But when I first was diagnosed, I, I'll be honest, I did think like that was it. I didn't know how I was going to like live sort of thing. But it's amazing what you can do when you, you use your mind and push through sort of thing. So, yeah. yeah. It's where you do find a way, don't you, eventually. I, I, don't, I don't have a phobia as such, but I do feel what you're saying about being watched in public when you inject. Yeah. just feel all eyes are now on mm -hmm. you. Even though they're not, they're likely not, but you just because yeah. like, you've got that needle in your hand. I found in public, I've waited until there's not too many people in that space, and then I might inject. So I might inject yeah. delayed, which is a bad thing, or I might go somewhere like gents and do it in an unhygienic place just to hide away. So when it's mm. changed, since changing the pumping, that's not an issue. It, yeah, little thing out, a couple of buttons, nobody knows what's happening. Mm. magical stuff so that's that's tech what about what about gem gem the person what i mean i know a few bits about you i know mm -hmm. that you enjoy gardening yeah I've, I've seen that on facebook and i know that you enjoy pole pole dancing well i've seen mm -hmm. that on insta so anything else what what how do you how do you cope with your diabetes and those two things to begin with? Um, I find that like with gardening, um, if I'm having a particularly bad day with my diabetes, like with my anxiety, um, it's nice to get out in the garden and just like have a pot around or if I'm planting flowers or just weeding. I think it's great for mental health because you just literally go into like a different world. It's really odd. Um, and you think, oh, I don't feel like it. But once I get out there with a cup of tea or coffee um, and then before, you know, hours have gone past and then I feel like refreshed and I feel like I feel like it's like I've not had to think about diabetes. You know, the only time is like if say I have a hypo, uh, which is always typical if I'm gardening. Um, but yeah, a lot of the time it's like a mental release, really. The gardening is it's kind of an exercise. Well, it is an exercise. Is that, is that what? Gives you the hypos you think because gardening it's not kind of not associated with hard work but actually it is mm -hmm. isn't it it's a lot of up yeah. and downs and moving yeah 
Because that you find yeah. you find you get a lot of hypos in the garden. A few times I have, yeah. Like um obviously now I'm trying to keep my sugar levels like lower. Um the I drop very quickly. As soon as I hit five, I drop quite quickly, which is a pain. So if I go out into the garden at like at five and then I'm like gardening and doing digging, within like five, ten minutes I'll be having a hypo from the work. So it's it's very odd. But normally like weeding, it isn't too bad if I'm sat down and doing it. But anything that's like heavy work, then yeah, I have noticed quite handy if your sugar levels are high because it brings them down so that's a bonus but yeah it is it is it was a learning curve when I first diagnosed because obviously you just don't know what activities are going to affect what um and that's why I then went to pole dancing for fitness uh was because I'm not a runner I really don't like running no offense to people who run but I'm not a runner um and yes at the time when my dog was alive I did a lot of walking um, but I just couldn't find anything that gave me that all over workout and mentally a workout as well. And uh, yeah, that's when a friend introduced me to pole dancing and then that was it. I was hooked. I loved it. And it's just been perfect, really. Yeah, I mean, uh, I guess it's quite a physical thing. If you're lifting yourself upside down, that has to be quite a different mm. thing to do, and quite an energetic thing to do. So yeah, uh, in the same way, in the same way. You know, walking. I know, I know. Used to walk a lot. Um, that's one of my main exercises, I suppose. And, and in terms of, as you said, a learning curve, that's something I didn't notice would affect my blood glucose in the past. But now I can monitor that more. I notice the fall off, and it doesn't take long. Mm -hmm. Just as you when, as when you're gardening, it doesn't take long to quickly go away, fall down. And no. It's the same same for me with any sort of physical exercise that's kind of cardio i guess i suppose walking yeah. gardening is kind of cardio i suppose as well yeah i get, mm. get why that would happen to you so there's 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 your hobbies is there anything else that you, that you get up to that might involve managing your diabetes or are those your main two um no not really um my other hobby is gaming so that just involves me sitting there um I suppose it helps in a way with my diabetes because if I'm like my sugar levels are high and I've got to wait for them to come down, I can either play my Switch or my PlayStation. Um, but yeah, like other than that, I just tend to be like working. So yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm doing. Yeah, I, I, I knew you gamed a lot. Do you, do you find that gaming gives you high as well? Because in another podcast, the It's Medicinal one, Harvey's a gamer and he's also mentioned that when he games certain games, will send in hypo and it depends on the game is that something you've noticed as well yeah so if it's like a um a high pressured game so um say if i'm playing like gta online and you're doing a heist you know then that will kind of like get you your heart racing so obviously that can make your sugar levels drop um but then if i'm like saying playing animal crossing then my levels will be fine because it's very chilled you know sort of thing so yeah, yeah it does if you're doing like the good old-fashioned like boss modes on a game then all of a sudden you're like oh my god sort of thing and then so if your yeah, heart's that's... beating away you find yeah that it's gonna... yeah oh, yeah, it's yeah so you can get a hypo and you can get a hyper i suppose as well because if you're that stressed because you can't complete a level then that could push you higher. But I've only had high pose, but that was like a while ago. But that was when I was like particularly stressed about not completing a mission on a game. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I see what he means with that one. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I see. You think there's so many things that can affect blood glucose. Mm. Just day to day stuff like your hobbies and gardening, gaming, pole dancing, all of that stuff can have an effect. Mm. And people that don't have diabetes sometimes think, well, isn't it just food? Isn't it just insulin and then balance the two? And yeah, you do. Yeah. But there's so many other things where you have to live yeah. a life that do affect your blood sugars. And that's the great thing about having like Lever and the tech. We can actually see and look back at our data and go, oh my God, all I did was like do the, put the washing out and look, that took me 20 minutes, but look at that dip there. Or, oh, I went for a longer walk than usual. Look what happened there with my levels. And like, it's amazing. So many times I've showed friends and family and been like, look, here you go. 
look you can see what it does like it affects me sort of thing so yeah it does like go hand in hand sometimes to be able to see and go oh my goodness i only did this and look what happened to my sugar levels like it blows my mind at times it's good to make other people aware as well and mm. it is it is diabetes awareness month so i guess mm. i'll tag this in on social media maybe someone will see this that doesn't have diabetes and become aware yeah. that it isn't just food it isn't just insulin it's many things Mm -hmm. so, so many factors there's, there's loads of factors so to end today gem i want mm -hmm. you your best advice your one your one top tip even if it's off the top of your head for living with diabetes what's what's your what's your one thing to help oh. you get by um I kind of always go through it. It's going to be a bit cheesy, I'll be honest. Um, but there is a wrestler called uh, Seth Rollins, and um, he had a, a like a little mantra a while ago. Was like, um, uh, I think it was like uh, redesign, rebuild, and reclaim. And I kind of take that mantra on with my diabetes because I always think, okay, not every day is perfect. But if something comes up with my diabetes and I can't solve it, I try and rebuild it. Then I like, you know, reclaim it, redesign it, you know, make it my own. And I just see it as that, you know, yes, you'll have good days. Yes, you'll have bad days. But at least, you know, with your diabetes, it's you have diabetes. It's not diabetes ruling you sort of thing. And I see it as take it head on, see if you can you know redesign it you know you own your diabetes then and then if not you just try the next day you know and every every day is like a roller coaster but yeah that's how i kind of try to keep pushing through especially the bad days because i know we have a lot of them as diabetics like you think, oh god not again <laughs> yeah that's perfect thank you so much thank you for joining me today jen um i'll catch up with you on social media in the near future We'll talk about dinosaurs and biscuits and all that fun stuff for sure. It sounds fun. Yeah. Thanks for joining me today and uh, I'll speak to you again soon. Okay, bye. bye <laughs>